Science, of course, uh, remains the name of the game aboard the International Space Station, and we've all heard the saying, you are what you eat. Well, there's several space station experiments that have looked into what crews are eating and how their diet may affect things such as bone loss, muscle loss, and also vision issues or problems. In order to do that, samples are collected on orbit of blood and urine periodically. When those are returned to Earth, those samples have to go someplace, and that place is where we find my colleague, Lori Meggs, who visited one of our labs here at the Johnson Space Center to learn more about nutrition and biochemistry. We're talking blood and urine today. Nobody likes to talk about it, but Dr. Scott Smith has to deal with it. When the samples come back from the space station, they come to this lab. Tell us about that. Well, we, we are the nutritional biochemistry lab, and I usually like to draw the distinction that there's a food lab here at NASA that makes the food. Um, we are not the food lab. We are the nutrition lab. Um, and our job is to understand the nutritional requirements of the body and what the body needs, how much calcium, how much iron, how much zinc, how much protein. Um, and the way we get at that is by looking at uh, blood and urine samples. By collecting blood and urine, it can tell us um, what's going on in the body, what your bones are doing, what your muscles are doing, um, fuel homeostasis, lots of things. Um, come out of blood and urine. And there's a lot of things to learn from that and, and the difference in microgravity Absolutely. as on Earth. Absolutely. So, so how do you do that? Well, a lot of the, the basic sample processing happens in this lab. Um, when we collect samples on Earth uh, before and after flight, um, the crews will carry around a bag that has bottles in it for their urine. Um, we'll go meet up with them and stick a needle in them and collect some blood. Um, and that all comes back here for processing. Um, when we collect urine and blood in flight, the blood collection is the same thing. Um, you, again, it's a needle, some tubes. Um, sometimes the crews will draw their own blood, which gets interesting because they will, um, we train them ahead of time, um, and they will voluntarily decide to stick themselves, um, which has worked out really, really well. We've been collecting blood for a little over, for almost 10 years um, on board space station. Um, and uh, the crews have done phenomenally well. Now, I would think the urine's a little trickier, though. The urine's a little trickier. <laughs> now, I would say we've had a lot of folks collect urine in flight. Not one of them has come back and said, that's a great way to collect urine. <laughs> um, when the crews go to the bathroom, there is a toilet on board, obviously. Um, but that, that all goes, it's like the toilet at home. It all goes into a main dump area that if you want to sample it, you're out of luck. So when we do experiments, what we have to do is the crew uses these devices and this is what's called a urine collection device. Um, it's just a, a plastic type bag. Uh, what happens is the crew will void into the bag. There's a chemical in the bag known as lithium chloride, which is just a chemical salt. And we add that lithium chloride, a small amount of it, to the bag before it flies. And, and why do, do you We do, do that, that in the lab two doors down. Well, what happens is we can't bring this whole bag back. So the crew will void into the bag. They'll mix the urine by pressing on the bag so the lithium chloride gets mixed in with the urine. And then what happens is they'll take one of these syringes and then out of the other end of the bag, they will take the lid off the syringe, pop it in this little rubber opening here, and will then withdraw a urine sample. And easy this, as that. Easy as that. And they'll put the cap back on here. Um, this gets pulled out to the end and then the, the white piece breaks off. Um, and this syringe part is what goes in the freezer. And it'll stay in the freezer on board space station until there's a SpaceX vehicle coming home. Realize that when they void into this bag, typically they collect three of these syringes out of that bag. Because oh, okay. this supports not only our experiment, but a number of other experiments. So um, we do take a little bit more out of each void. Okay, so let's talk about your experiments. You've finished a nutrition experiment. Yep. You've finished a Prokay experiment. Tell us about that. And then the biochem, that's the big one that's going on. Indeed. Um, well, the nutrition study that we finished was, was literally uh, simple. Let's collect blood and urine and see what happens during flight. Um, that went very well. And what happened when that one ended is there was a decision um, to, to con essentially continue that effort. Um, and that's what the biochemical profile study is. And we're looking for that to give us a broad, a broad look at, at crew biochemistry that we can then relate to changes in diet, changes in exercise, changes in other countermeasures that we're testing on space station. So we provide information to the space station program and a lot of the other scientists that have studies going on on station. So how does this all relate to us on Earth though? Um, well, you know, it, it depends on, on each facet, but I would tell you that in my opinion, everything we do 
in space relates in one way or the other to what's happening on Earth. Um, you mentioned the Pro-K study, which is a study we're looking at to modify the diet to help mitigate bone loss. And what we're specifically trying to do is to decrease the amount of animal protein people consume and increase the amount of fruits and vegetables people consume. And we think that by doing those two things, and that it's the ratio of those two things, that you'll lose less bone. So we, we fed the crews different diets, collected blood and urine, and are now looking at how the diet affected that metabolism. Now, that relates, obviously, to all of us here on Earth um, and will help us better understand the relationship of diet with bone. Um, and, you know, the people that make the dietary recommendations for Americans um, read our scientific papers as they do many other scientific papers, and we contribute to that body of knowledge that helps them make decisions that affect everybody. I know you have a lot of samples to get to, so we're going to let you get to that, and I'm going to avoid that pool of urine and get out of here. Thank you.